So today we're going to compare the array tools for a polar array in both FreeCAD and Blender. Let's start with FreeCAD. Depending on which workbench you're using, for instance, I'm going to use the part design, the process is slightly different. So first, if I was in the part design, we would have to create a new body. And I'm going to go for a new sketch on the XY plane and then hit OK. I'm just going to make a base to array against. So I'm going to create some holes in a circular pattern in a square. So something like this. I'm going to take the two sides, make those equal, and take this point and this point and center it in the center. And I can add some dimensions in here if I wanted to, which I'm not going to do. So we've got our first operation, which is going to be a pad in this case. So I'm just going to have a three millimeter pad and I'm going to place another sketch on here, which I'm going to array. So I'm going to place a sketch and we'll pocket this into here. So we're going to cut this away. So I'm going to use a circle like so. I'm going to hit escape, get the mouse pointer back, close, and we're going to pocket that using the pocket into the material. And we'll go through all. So we've got a hole in our material. I want to create a circular set of holes. To do that, I can go over to the model. I'm going to select the action that made up the feature that I want to create an array out of, a polar array. And I'm going to come up to the part design, apply a pattern, and then polar pattern. So you can see they've been applied across this axis. You can choose which axis you want. The sketch normal, so the normal's going this way which is the correct axis, and I can increase the amount I want in here to whatever I like. So this is in part design. If I was using the part workflow, then I will start with a sketch rather than a body, and then extrude it. We go for three millimeters, and then I would create a sketch upon here. So I can do that the same by clicking on the face. And we will need to be in the sketcher. So we come down to the sketcher and we click that face, create a sketch upon that face, plain face. OK. And then we can add the circle. Now, because part doesn't automatically boolean stick these together, we would use an extrude on that circle back over in the part. We could use a cylinder if we wanted to. And then we would extrude this. And we'll go in the negative direction. So I'm just going to go minus, let's go minus 10 so we can see where that comes out. So that'll come out at the bottom. So bring this around, you can see it comes out at the bottom. With that, we would use our polar array. Now, to do that, we come over to the draft workbench because it's got a rain tools within there. Click on the extrude that we've just done, modifications, array tools and polar array. The point is where we place it. So if I created the point here just by clicking, then it will create the polar array around that point. That's control Z that. If I took that extrude, modifications, array tools, and polar array, and then reset the point, and then hit OK, then it will be placed around the center point. So if I go view, toggle axis cross, you can see our center points here. Once we've got our array, we can go back to the part workbench and then take the one we want to keep, the extrude, control select the one we want to remove, the array, and we use a Boolean cut. And that will cut that material away from this extrude and leave the cut here. Let's have a look to Blender to see how it's done in there. So we're in Blender now. Let's create a new project and delete the cube. Again, we're going to follow the same process. So making a similar object. Let's go out to add mesh and add a plane. So we added the plane here and we can set some size of the plane. Let's go 10 millimeters. So we've got our plane. And what I'm going to do is select the plane. You can see it's selected at the top there. Down to the spanner icon to add a modifier. And I'm going to solidify that. 
and the thickness of 3 mil. Obviously, when I did this in free CAD, this was a lot bigger. So let's just bring this down two millimeter. So we've got our thickness in here, which is similar to our extrude as in a solidifier. Now I'm going to come up to the top and add mesh. And let's go for our cylinder. So we've added a cylinder in there. We can change the radius and depth if we want. And now I want to array this. But we can't just add a normal array modifier to this. We need a helper object to allow us to create that polar array. Because if we added a modifier this of array modifier, that's like that cylinder, add modifier and array, it's just going to array out this way. So you can see we can increase the count to say five. And you see this is not going into any circular array, but there's a way of doing this. And we've got something here called object offset. We can use this to modify the shape of our array. So that's just control Z. So we just get back to the cylinder. We could have just deleted our modifier. Let's have a look how we create that polar array. First, we need to add another object in here. So I'm going to go up to add and come down to empty and come down to the plane axis. So we've added a plane axis and here it is there, the empty. And that will be added to wherever the 3D cursor is. So you can see in the plane axis there in the X, Y, and Z location are zero. So let's create the array. We create the array in the same way. So we're going to select the cylinder, add modifier, and array. I was already on the spanner icon. Let's increase the array. And now I'm going to use the object offset. Open this up, click on the object offset and select the empty. Make sure the object offset is checked. Now, if we click on the empty and try to move it with the move tool, as we move it, so does our array move as well. We can be more precise by using the transform over here. We also have rotation. So we can rotate this and as you can see, the array rotates as well. Let's zero that off in zero the keyboard. And let's try the other ones. There's the Y, so you can see how we create that polar array now. On the right Y axis. And let's use it along the Z. And this is where we're going to create this polar array. So we can bring it around on the Z to where we want. And we can change the location along the X. So we can create our polar array like so. Let's increase the amount of arrays to come up to the cylinder and add to the modifier and increase the count. And let's go for say six. So we've got six on the array. Now let's come over to the empty and I've got the move tool selected and we can move this out. So I'm going to move it out this way and out and rotate it around the Z. So you can see they're rotating around the Z now and they come back and join together. Bring this back in and look at this from the top. So you can see what's happening. Let's take that cylinder and move it into position. So I want to move it down here. So this is where the first circle or cylinder is going to start. And then we can take our empty. I've still got the move tool selected. The empty is here and we'll move this in. Click on the cylinder. And we can move it into position. But this is quite hard to move. And this is because of the empty, this one here. So you can see when we move that, we really need to move the cylinder as well. Let's control Z that. Let's control select both of these and move them as one. And we'll move them into position. 
you can see we can move it along the x, let's say two mil, the y, z, etc. But we can move these as one just by multi selecting them. Once they're in position, I can click off. Let's rotate this around this way. We can do some adjustments again by control selecting both of them. It's going to move them down. And then I can use a Boolean operation against these two. So I'm going to take the plane, add a modifier that's come in, and we're going to use a Boolean modifier. Collapse the solidifier. Object, we're going to select the cylinder. Let's come up to the cylinder and hide that. And you can see that we have now cut those holes into this base plane. So that's how you would create a polar array in both FreeCAD and Blender. As you can see, they are very different to create the same result. Hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you again soon. If you're enjoying these videos and you would like to support the channel, then you can do so via my Ko-Fi page. That's at ko-fi.com forward slash MJ3D Studio. Any donations will be used to help to span the channel. I'd like to thank you all for watching and I hope to see you again soon.